uh, here, uh, I'm going to formulate this uh, multivariate linear regression model. Okay. So consider this example. Uh, we have a dependent variable occupation and prestige. And it is a function of alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is, uh, if you learn high school algebra or the kind of introductory uh, math course at the college level, alpha corresponds to intercept, right? Intercept, the starting point. Plus beta one, education. So beta one is the slope for education variable plus beta two the slope for uh parent education plus an error okay this error term uh statisticians and mathematicians have have different uh names for it sometimes it's called error term uh, which is uh, most popular other times it's called disturbance term and uh, the stochastic component that is the random component of this equation. Uh, what this term contains uh, are uh, any variables okay, that we cannot or we do not include in our equation, in our equation, okay? And uh, this error term helps us uh, actually uh, set up the model. Later on, we'll learn that. At the same time, it also brings us probably the uh, largest amount of, of trouble uh, for uh, estimating the square regression model. And later on, we'll learn that again. And uh, so the linear regression model can be written as yi plus beta zero, right? So, so this time we change alpha to beta zero just to make uh, the kind of spelling consistent. Right? Uh, all referring to beta. So at beta zero, that's intercept, plus beta one, xi one, plus da da da, plus beta k, xi k, plus da da da, plus beta capital letter k, xi capital letter k, plus epsilon i. So here, i uh, is the sub index to denote uh, individual cases. And uh, the second subscript uh, for X corresponds to uh, or, or indexes the variable, okay? So for example, this is the first variable. This is the second, uh, this is the case variable. Okay, this is the case variable. Um, okay, and uh, we can also uh, kind of condense this formulation a little bit more, right? Because here, you know, uh, theoretically speaking, the K can go uh, to infinite, right? Then our formulation can be quite tedious and uh, complicated. So in this case, we can define XI to be a vector, okay? Or a matrix vector, right? Uh, that contains the unit co column and all variables. So we simply use X to denote all these uh, independent variables. Then for YI, we can simply uh, formulate as uh, XI multiplied by beta plus epsilon I, the error term, epsilon I. And uh, use a bit of matrix language that we can spell out uh, X vector like that and the beta vector like that. Um, plus epsilon i. And here, um, epsilon i is not spelled out. Actually, it can go from one to what? To n, let's say, uh, for i. And uh, if we know a little bit of matrix multiplication, then it's going to be what? Uh, this vector multiply, this row vector multiply by this column vector we will get what? One multiplied by beta zero plus xi one multiplied by one plus x two multiplied by beta two, et cetera. And it goes back to this equation here. Uh, next, I wanna talk about a couple of functions of 
a linear regression model. First is linearity. So what is linearity? There's uh, the regression model, okay? uh, the, the structural model is, is, is linear. Why is linear related to access through the beta parameters? Why is a linear function of beta and x, right? Either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or a division. And that is very uh, kind of straightforward interpretation of the assumption linearity. But there's a lot more to it. When we talk about linearity assumption in linear regression model, it means, in essence, actually it means, well, beta is, excuse me, y is linear with regard to betas. And can be nonlinear with xk. Well, here is an exception. Let's say y. Okay, the probability of y equal to a certain response level given x is, is a function of exponential of x beta over one plus exponential of x beta. So in this case, y or the probability here is not linear with regard to beta. It is not linear with regard to beta. It is also not linear with regard to x. In this case, we can say this is not linear model and the linearity assumption is violated as opposed to the previous equation. Y is a simple function of a linear function of beta and x. Second assumption is collinearity. Okay, collinearity. Um, that would imply the axes are not linearly dependent. A couple of things, okay when we say the assumption of collinearity. Uh, first is the axes are not linearly dependent. Okay? That means, okay, from one variable, we cannot perfectly, perfectly uh, deduce uh, information for another variable, independent variable, mm -hmm. independent variable. Uh, so that's called linear dependency, and we don't want to have that. At the same time, we want to have some correlation among the variables, because if we don't have any uh, collinearity going on among the x variables, then we don't need to have multiple regression. We, we can simply run by very regression. We can run regression of uh, y on uh, x1, then we can run regression of y on x2, et cetera. We don't have to have a multiple regression there. So we don't have, we don't want to have perfect collinearity because the model not gonna uh, run. At the same time, we want to have a little bit collinearity, some, some level collinearity, okay? We don't want to have no collinearity because uh, then, um, uh, multiple regression, linear regression is not necessary. Uh, in technical term, it means the model has a full rank. That is all columns in the data matrix X, okay? The matrix that contains all independent variables are linearly independent. So from one column or multiple columns, we cannot derive other columns. Okay? They're independent. And third assumption is called zero conditional mean assumption. And this is probably the most important assumption of all. Zero, zero conditional mean uh, of every term in mathematical term is formulated as follows, right? Expectation of the error term x uh, epsilon i given x is zero, okay, is zero. That is, once we uh, um, add together all the error terms given axis, given given axis, then the average is gonna come out as zero. Okay, and this identifying assumption implies that uh, you can do the derivation here implies that uh, the expectation of 
yi given xi, that is the conditional mean of yi, conditioned on uh, x values is equal to xi beta. Uh, that's a very nice outcome. And also, this conditional mean assumption uh, implies the identifiability of intercept. Without this assumption, without this assumption, actually we cannot identify intercept uh, from the error term. They're mixed together. Once we impose this, this assumption, that is the error term, the conditional mean of error, conditional on axis is zero, then the intercept is identified. And also, uh, why this uh, assumption is important? This it makes sure that the error terms, the disturbances, the error terms, and axis, they're independent of each other. And this makes our results consistent, our estimation consistent, that is accurate, relatively speaking. If this assumption does not hold, then uh, the OLS regression uh, kind of framework collapses. Okay, next assumption uh, of linear regression model, uh, this classic uh, least square is homo uh, sadasticity. Homo sadasticity. Uh, that means uh, we have homo uh, sadastic errors. Okay? That is for a given axis, the errors have a consistent variance. The errors have a consistent variance. Okay. Next assumption is uncorrelated errors. So we, we just talk about, well, homo sadasticity, right? Homo sadasticity assumption of the errors, that is the error, the variance uh, of the error terms uh, are constant. Then the errors across cases, different cases, they're not supposed to be correlated. Okay. And this is the assumption uh, peculiar to the classic uh, ordinary least square. Okay. That is for two observations, any two observations, i and j, the covariance between uh, epsilon i and epsilon j is zero. That is, there's no correlation among these two error terms. Uh, what could be some counterexamples? When do we have such correlation? Well, when we sample cases from the same household, okay? Well, there gotta be something correlated in the error. For example, intelligence is it, it, quite often not measured in, in the model, right? Because it's very hard to measure. Sometimes we simply don't have any information about intelligence. What are we gonna do? Well, we have trouble, right? when that happens. So that's a very typical example uh, for having correlated errors. And in classic least square models, uh, we assume the error terms are not correlated. Next is normality and normality. That is the, the errors are thought of as uh, the combined effects of many small factors. So in general, we assume that we've taken into account all major uh, factors predicting or uh, modeling uh, the response variable. Okay, and uh, what's omitted, they're minor, and it is reasonable to assume that the error term is a collection of many small factors follow normal distributions. Again, that assumption is not critical for uh, deriving the, uh, uh, the slopes and intercepts, but it is important for making inferences, okay? That is statistical testing. Okay, so this concludes my uh, kind of quick uh, discussion about the history of these squares and uh, some basic assumptions of, uh, of least regression models. Thank you for listening.